Hello, this is Junju from Penn State. Today, I'm going to talk about tracking seismic noise variation during COVID-19 pandemic using fiber optic sensors. First, I'm going to introduce the impact of COVID-19 on seismic noise, and then why another report and what is special in our studies. I will show the result from the dust data recorded by Penn State Dust Array. So first, the COVID-19 lockdown measures were implemented to stop the spreading of coronavirus, which affected the human activities. For example, this figure shows that the Times Square is almost get empty during the lockdown measures. And the seismometers across the world report this worldwide quality. This figure shows a, a huge drop during the lockdown measures. And uh, based on the data of 180 seismometers across the world, Study seismic noise is important because it can be used to quantify the human activities and further evaluate the effectiveness of the measures and optimize measures in the future. The previous study mainly used the seismometers. However, these sparsely distributed seismometers in urban areas is hard to be used to characterize the highly spatial temporal varying cultural noise. Here are two examples showing the data coverage in northern Italy and uh, Tokyo metropolitan areas. The sedations are too sparse to provide high spatial temporal resolution monitoring result. And in this study, I'm going to answer the question that how to characterize anthropogenic noise in high spatial temporal resolution and what is the impact of COVID-19 measures on seismic noises. The approach is to use fiber optic sensors to track the variations. So the recent technology distributed acoustic sensing can turn existing telecommunication of fibers to dense seismic array and to, to provide like a dense data coverage in urban areas with low cost. So the data we use is collected by the fiber array deployed on Penn State campus in the middle or in the center of Pennsylvania, plotted as tri red triangles, and the green line indicated our four kilometers long dark fibers with two meter ch channel spacing, which means we have 2000 channels in our study areas, and the sampling rate is about 500 hertz. Then I'll introduce how we calculate the noise level. We first calculate the single power spectral density in each five meter window, then the PSD for each hour is averaged over 12 segments. The noise level is represented by the RMS strain rate by integrate through the interested frequency band. And the final time lapse noise change is defined in percentage by comparing with the baseline noise level before lockdowns, where we here we use the noise level in a week in February. And here, we I'll show the result. So we pick 21 day at different time period from normal spring semester to spring break. And, the, and then the issue of the stay at home orders and after face yellow, the business gradually reopen and to the face green. So this clear diurnal pattern shows that the signals are noise are mainly from the human activities at daytimes and look into the space like the time axis, we can see a distinct drop in in the state during the stay at home order. And uh, also the noise variation can be is different in different areas. And next, I will show the, we further explore the spatial distribution. We analyze this average, no, average noise level at daytime on three different day, like before lockdowns, during lockdowns, and after like the loose of the lockdown measures. So the, we first observe the, the, the clearest noise variation on main campus and uh, the noise variation in the frequency band of one to 10 hertz is larger than the other frequency band. And in other places with fewer human activities, the noise 
level is pretty stable, and the ex exception can be found in this 110 to 50 hertz range, which we interpret as the traffic noise. We also observe the significant noise variation in the array end, which is caused by the closure and reopen of a conference construction site. And uh, this large noise variation observed at intersections while adjacent channels away from the road remains unchanged. This proves that the, our fiber can detect the exact place where the traffic noise is dominant, which proves the high spatial resolution of our monitoring result. And since our fiber covers the whole campus, provide, this op provide us opportunities to identify different anthropogenic noise sources. We choose, we choose two sub-arrays, one beneath the pedestrian only and one under the main road. We can see that on March, 8, March 5th, like both sections were pretty busy, but on April 16th, when the, when the, during the stay-at-home order, there are only two people walked by in this one hour sections time period and the number of passing vehicles also gets decreased. On June 4th, the vehicle's traffic noise increases while the footsteps remain unchanged, like in a low level. And the, by analyzing the, the spectrum, we can see the two peaks is missing, which means the, this is the footstep signals at the two and four hertz. And the large drop in the frequency band of 10 to 50 hertz also indicate the frequency band of the passing vehicles. And uh, there are also one construction site on campus. From the recordings of a channel next to the next to the construction site, we can see on April 15th, when the construction site was closed, that we only record the background noise, but when it when it reopened on June 1st, we can see the a lot, lots of noise signals, like this 10 to 30 hertz signals from the construction vehicles. And this pulses up to 120 hertz can be the noise generated by the machinery. And uh, here we also conclude a temporal noise variation in general from a channel under the main road. We plot the no average noise per hour and the orange line shows the average noise like during daytime and compared with the Google mobility data from workplaces and transport. So during the spring break, students, le students left school and caused, by a, caused a slight drop in the freak span below 10 hertz and above 10 hertz, it remains stable and a distinct drop of noise level to the lowest level like uh, in, during this period is observed because of the stay at home order. And after the face yellow, the noise level below 10 hertz remain unchanged while it, it increased in the frequency band above 50 hertz. And after face green, noise level in all frequency band increases. And we interpret this uh, like noise below 10 hertz is mainly from school activities and noise in 10 to 50 hertz, many from traffic noise. Some take home message. We observe the noise variation using the dust data in State College. And we present the evidence of the spatial temporal correlation between seismic noise and human activities impacted by progressive COVID 19 measures. We observe large variation on main campus and the smaller variation in the area where there are fewer uh, human activities. And this decrease increase trend is in both like noise level and lockdown measures like from stay at home order to face green. And we distinguish different human activities based on their frequency, like school activities, footstep, road traffic, and industrial activities. This study can show that the seismic noise can offer like an 
another approach to evaluate the impact of COVID-19 measures in populated areas. We would thank the following people to help us on this project. This work has been submitted to Geophysics Research Letter. Thanks.